This week on Engineering Newswire, brought to you by Memory Protection Devices, we're creating a robotic sea turtle, printing embedded optics, and prospecting for ice on the moon. A group of scientists from the ETH Zurich Research Group are in the process of creating a swimming robotic sea turtle named Naro Tartaruga. Naro Tartaruga is intended to be fast with an estimated top speed of 6.6 .6 feet per second. Its two front flippers will be able to move independently and each fin will be controlled by three actuators, allowing for movement in three dimensions, making the robotic turtle quite maneuverable. The big dome shell will be used to house a variety of sensors and other electronics that include pressure, temperature, water leakage, and water flow sensors, along with gyros, surface GPS, and a compass, and motor encoders. Also along for the ride will be an i7 dual core processor, a 48 volt lithium polymer battery pack, and a Blue Fox computer vision system. Although it is possible to operate the current prototype by remote control, Naro Tartaruga is being created first and foremost as an exercise in autonomous underwater navigation. Finding Nemo just became a lot easier. The moon's northern pole could be home to a substantial amount of water ice that could be a source of fuel and oxygen for future lunar expeditions. Now we just have to find it. A team at Astrobotic Technology just might have built the right robot for the job. This is Polaris, a full-size solar-powered prototype that could search for rich deposits of water ice on the moon's poles. The first of its kind prototype includes a drill that can bore one meter into the lunar surface and solar arrays that will be capable of delivering 250 watts of electrical power, even as it operates in those dark lunar regions where the sun barely hugs the horizon. Polaris is being developed for a future expedition to the moon's northern pole in hopes to hitch a ride atop a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch vehicle. Astrobotic even has its sights set on winning the Google Lunar X Prize. Can you believe it? That's $20 million up in the air over one fancy icebox. Printed Optics is a new approach to creating custom optical elements for interactive devices using 3D printing. Researchers at Disney Research Pittsburgh and Carnegie Mellon University are experimenting with 3D printed optics with a clear resin. An example of this new technology uses a mobile projector and internal light pipes to transfer projections through an object to do things like give a toy animated eyes. This allows lines that would normally require individual LCD or LED displays, as well as individual batteries, for animated parts to be accomplished with a single projector. The researchers are also experimenting with embedded electric components that are inserted into an object mid-print. By doing so, they can create components like buttons, dials, sliders, and LED bulbs that focus light, as well as accelerometers and touch sensors. This could effectively reduce the size and weight of electronics, as well as make them more accurate. Cool, but those eyes are just creepy. Airport security may get just a bit more annoying with the addition of yet another explosive detective device to the airport screening arsenal. Hitachi, in collaboration with Nippon Signal and University of Yamanashi, have developed a prototype boarding gate that collects minute particles that have affixed themselves to integrated circuit cards or mobile devices used as boarding passes. With high sensitivity mass spectrometry integrated into the boarding gate, the system can detect the presence of explosive compounds within one to two seconds, enabling it to inspect 1,200 passengers an hour, which, according to the developers, won't disrupt the flow of passengers boarding the plane. Yeah, right. While the prototype boarding gate was developed with airport scanning in mind, Hitachi says the equipment can easily be adapted to other public spaces, such as train stations, stadiums, and event halls. Pretty soon, airport security is going to ask everybody to walk through just wearing their birthday suit. Woo! A research team at the Georgia Institute of Technology wants to give robots the power of the almighty MacGyver, the ability to use objects in their environments to accomplish high-level tasks. Researchers plan to develop an algorithm that will allow a robot to identify an arbitrary object in a room, determine the object's potential function, and turn that object into a simple machine that can be used to complete an action. By providing the robot with basic knowledge of rigid body mechanics and simple machines, the robot should be able to autonomously determine the object's mechanical force properties and construct motion plans for using the object to perform high-level tasks. 
After the researchers develop and optimize the hybrid reasoning system using computer simulations, they plan to test the software using Gollum Krang. Gollum is this sexy humanoid robot behind me. He was initially designed to study the whole body, uh, whole body robotic planning and control, but now he'll just have to work on stealing poor old Richard Dean Anderson's thunder. The conversion of solar energy into electricity is at the forefront of the alternative energy movement. Now, the Brazilian company Flex Solar and the Fraunhofer Institute have developed flexible organic solar cells to take the next step forward. A roll-to-roll -roll process will be applied for production in contrast to traditional methods in which each element is produced separately. This process is quite inexpensive, which is a term not typically mentioned in the photovoltaic production. Not to mention that the process makes the solar cells more flexible, so they can be incorporated into many more facets of everyday life for the energy consumer who needs to charge things on the go. Cheaper power off the grid? Sign me up. Do you have story ideas? Comment below or email us, and we'll cover them in an upcoming episode. For BDND TV, I'm Megan Zimba, and this has been your Engineering Newswire. <laughs>